let's get started. Left over right. Us. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to be covering a couple of back takes, right? Um, this class is, there's not a whole lot of brand new people. And those of you that have been here have been here through the entire cycle of eight classes. So I don't want to spend too much time on, you know, going back over the exact same thing we've done. I want to add a couple new pieces. So we're talking about back control and back takes. But first, let's review our wrestling warm up. So there's a couple of movements, right? I'll stick with the basic ones. So first one is going to be your sprawl. Everyone is familiar with this, I hope. There. Okay, hands down, hips back. And the important part of a sprawl is I have to get back up to my stance, right? So I transfer my weight into my hands, I pop up. Right there, okay? Right in my stance, right? I'm ready to go. Next one is going to be our shot. So this one involves a level change. I'm going to level change, bring my chest to my knee, right? Here, and I'm going to drive myself forward to two knees. Okay, there's my shot. I'm reaching for a single, reaching for a double. Step up, rotate back to my stance. Right away I can reshoot, right? Right away I'm rotating, always coming back to my stance as quickly as I can. Last one we're gonna add is our down block. So, protecting my lead leg, that leg kicks back, my hand goes down, and I can come back to my stance. Down block, here. Down block, here. Shoot, right, rotate. Down block, maybe a sprawl, shoot again, right, down block, right there. All right, I'll put the coaches in the middle here. A nice short round here just to warm up. And sprawl, sprawl, shoot. Put your hand on the ground if you feel like you need to, shoot. Down ball, down ball, sprawl, shoot, shoot, sprawl, right away, shoot, Popping back to your stance, ready to go, sprawl, down ball, shoot, right back to your stance and shoot, good, rotating up to your stance, sprawl, Shoot again. Down ball. Down ball. Sprawl. This is a little slower than it usually is. Shot. Good job. <laughs> Push too hard. Shoot. Sprawl. Sprawl. Shoot. 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 Shoot again. Sprawl. Sprawl. Down block. Shoot. Shoot. Sprawl. Down block. Sprawl. Shoot. Shoot. Down block. Down block, sprawl, shoot, and shoot. Last one, sprawl. Two, one, time. Thank you. <laughs> 60 driveways in the last 12 hours of my All right, so that is our warm up. I'll give you guys a, a quick 30 second breather if you need a drink. Getting here like that, and then we'll move along to our technique for today. So, we talked about taking the back from uh, the mount using the gift wrap, right? We're going to talk about taking the back from side control today. So, side control is going to be a little bit different, but there's going to be a couple of common threads. You can actually take the back with the gift wrap from side control, although I've found the gift wrap pretty difficult to obtain in general. So, 
I'll bring Coach Nathan in here. Here's how I prefer to do things from side control. We're going to go this way. Thank you. Here. Okay, side control. As we recall, two knees. I control head and arm. Okay, head and arm right here. Now, in order to expose the back, I talk about this every time, right? The back is currently hidden to me. I need to get my opponent onto their side. Now, most people who have trained jiu-jitsu are, are coached and they're trained not to turn away from their opponent ever, okay? Especially when you're in side control. Maybe during a guard pass they will, uh, just to save themselves some points, but when they get to side control, you're coached to always turn in. Right, so Coach Nathan's gonna turn in. He's not gonna turn away from it. If I want him to turn away, I gotta make him do that. So I like to do that with double underhook. So I've already got one underhook here. My hand on the head is gonna come out. I'm gonna underhook my partner's near arm and I'm gonna make a grip here. Either on the back of the collar or I can reach all the way for the shoulder. Okay, right over the top. Now I'm gonna use my forearm as a bar and shuck. The important thing here is my forearm is essentially acting as a bar on the back of my opponent's neck. So right here, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get that arm out of there. So I sit, I turn, I get that arm on my hip. Now I can reach underneath here even, and I can use my forearm as a bar to get it out of there, okay? Now I can dig for my underhook, pass the arm over, grab my seat belt, and I can utilize the same chair sit. Okay, same thing, I'm not falling straight back, so, uh, so I get my leg caught. Instead, I'm gonna take everything towards this side, the back side, and put that ear on the ground, freeing my top leg to come around and grab my other hook right here. I noticed I did that in two uh, different sequences there. It's actually the same. If you if you do both and you find there's a sequence you like better, uh, either one will work. But let's do the the simpler one, which is grabbing both underhooks off the bat. Side control. I have one underhook already. I'm going to go get this second one. I'm going to get behind the head right here. Okay. Once I get behind the head, again, I'm going to hold this thing nice and tight. I'm going to shuck and turn my opponent. All right, once I turn my opponent, I'm going to glue my chest right away to the shoulder and drop down nice and low. This is very important. If my chest is high, my opponent can take their back to the floor, right? I want to door stop them, so I drop my chest all the way low. Now when my opponent tries to turn, they get stopped by my body, okay? Now I'm going to pull this tight, slide up to my seat belt and my chair sit position. My leg, my one knee is above the shoulder. My foot is folded flat behind the back. I sit the corner and I get my back. Show you guys with a dummy and I'll change the angle just so you guys can see my foot position. Okay, right here. Double under, reach underneath, I shuck, I grab my seat belt and I'm gonna drop my chest low. All right? Once I'm ready to go, I pull and I slide back up to my dummy. So right here, okay? Now, I'm going to kind of sit to my hip and fold this one foot along the back, okay? Once I fold that foot, I'm gonna pull around the corner, throw my hooks in, Grab my seat belt, okay? So, from this position where my chest is dropped, I'm gonna pull, slide up, right in one motion, fold that foot, and sit the corner, right here. Back take from side control. All right, off you guys go.
That's it, Christian. Good. Looks like you figured out the charity. Should we send him to the back corner? That's it, Noah. Make sure you stay behind the head there, David. Right? Yep. Yeah, stay behind the head and establish your seatbelt. Your that's your right arm. There you go. That's it, Ryan. Keep going, guys. As you get more comfortable, I say this every time, pick up the pace. All right, speed it up a little bit. Coaches, you guys don't have to go super fast, just in case someone needs to see anything. But everyone at home, once you start to feel comfortable, definitely pick up the pace, all right? Okay, so this is not technically a beginner technique, but I wanted to show you guys a triangle side control just to show you guys the importance of getting someone up on their side. So, some of you will have seen me do this before, but I don't think I've ever taught this in a beginner class. So this is a little overwhelming, don't worry about it, um, but I did want you guys to give this a try. So, a couple of things here. One is we're going to talk about isolating the arm. So. We talk a lot about using scarf hold. To me, unless you're doing judo and you can win by pin, there is very little reason, I think, to use scarf hold over side control. Again, this is an opinion. You're free to disagree. But to me, I find side control is offers you many more options, okay? But the one good use I have for scarf hold, the one reason I'll go to scarf hold all the time, and I'll show you guys on this side, is to pick off an arm. Okay, so good opponents generally have an arm framing on your hip. If I want a triangle, I need to get that arm out of there. So what am I going to do? I'm going to reach behind me with my top arm for their elbow, and I'm going to sit to scarf hold to put that arm on my hip. Okay, so that arm is now in front of my stomach. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to roll my hips over the top, so I'm going to push my hips forward and switch to side control. 
Okay. This now means that the arm is in front of me. I'll show you on the other side. So I lift that arm, I sit. Now I push my hips over the top and I get that arm going across my partner's face. Okay, let's sit next. Uh, right, right Right here, thank you. Um, now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna hug, I'm gonna reestablish my head control. Okay, and I grab my partner's shoulder. From here, I look to turn my partner to their side. So I'm reaching into the far armpit here, forcing my opponent to turn. Now, what I can do, instead of taking the back, is I can look to sit, throw a leg over, and look for a triangle. So, again, once I get to here, right, I'm going to lean towards my knee, making my leg nice and light, like we talked about with our arm bars, and I come to my triangle position. I can lock it up here, maybe I can take an arm bar, right, maybe I finish that triangle. This is a lot. So instead, let's just start with the isolation sequence. Step number one, scarf hold. Step number two, turn to my knees, okay? Making sure I pin that arm in front of me. Step number three, head control, reaching for the armpit. Step number four, I'm going to turn my partner up on their side. Okay, like so. Push back a little bit more. It feels a little different with a dummy, but what I want you to make sure you're doing is you're threading in front of both arms and behind the head. This is the position we want. This is gonna open up arm locks, triangles, everything else. Okay, so let's say my partner's arm started inside my hip here. Step number one, scarf hold. Step number two, hips over, right? Make sure that arm is coming across. Step number three, go in front of the arm and underneath the head, grabbing this far armpit. Step number four, I'm just gonna roll everything up. Okay, now, you're gonna have to do a little more work with the dummy because the dummy doesn't have a spine. People will move when you do this to them because it puts a lot of pressure on the neck. All right, and we're gonna stop right here. Scarf will roll, recontrol the head, and grab the armpit. Now, I turn my partner right here. You can see I bring my hand in to assist. Okay, give that one a try, guys. It's a little more advanced, we're just working with that sequence getting our partner to their side. Looks like Ryan's already got it. Nigel's using maximum realism. Yes. There you go, Nigel. Very good. Now, if you want to try it, you can try the triangle as well, right? Windshield wiper your top leg, lean over that knee, and throw your foot all the way over the top. Good. There you go. Yep, you could do that as well. Good, Chris. That's it. Everybody else, if this is your first time seeing this, focus on getting your dummy up on its side, in front of both arms and behind the head. Almost like you're threading a bar. Good, Loic. Now get him onto his side, yes! Right there is perfect. See, most, most people will turn much easier than a dummy simply because people feel the pain in their neck. Right? They don't like their neck being cranked like that, so they'll turn to accommodate that pressure. Good. Looks like you guys have got it. Keep going, guys. We gotta wrap up with this one, and then we'll get around it. Uh, no, uh, so get him, basically set up the chair sit and then throw the back leg over. Yep. Uh, okay. so, set up the chair sit and lean over your top knee, right? Same thing we talked about with the arm bar. Lean over your top knee, bring your head all the way over. Unweight that leg, yes. There, okay. there you go. 
Good. And if you wanted to okay. roll over, switch to an arm bar, do whatever, that's all good. Okay. Or you could just air guitar and get that arm back in front. Nice. Like I do most of the time, because my legs are short. <laughs> Good, awesome job so far, guys. I know this is new to most of you. It's probably a little overwhelming, but you guys are doing really well. Rolling the hips, right? There's the triangle, Chris. Very good. Noah, very good, Noah. Right, you got the triangle as well. Just make sure. I would prefer you locking your legs. The no, no, you're good. Actually, I was confused. You're good. I was going to tell you to lock your legs the other way, and then I realized you actually had it correct. I just need to change your angle just a little bit. Nigel's got it as well. Awesome, goes. Good, Chris. Yep, and you can shed that arm and put it back in front of you if you want. I am inclined to do that as well, simply because my legs are short, and I find it difficult to lock that triangle with the shoulder in there. So if you want to swing your arm back and kind of throw that, throw your opponent's arm back in front of your chest. That works very well. And tight. All right, we have time for a quick round and then I'll take some questions. Starting from standing. Let's go with our knee cut pass. Right into scarf hold. And back to side control. Take the back for side control. Good. And rear naked choke. Remount. Get back over the top. Americana from mount. Back to knee on belly. And to the ground, pop back up. Windshield wipe. Windshield wipe. Jump switch. Good. And knee on belly arm bar. Good. Standing back up. X pass to knee on belly. Knee on belly, go to mount. From mount, roll into closed guard. Good. From closed guard, let's see a hip bump sweep. Good. And from here, let's go right into S now. Arm bar. Good. Looks like everyone's in the habit of not going straight to their back. And arm bar switch. Armbar position to S mount. Back to regular mount. Remember the weight transfer. Knee your head, good. And technical mount. Gift wrap. Reach around, good. And chair sit, take the back. Right away off that grip, keep the gift wrap, go for your armbar. Leg over the shoulder, frame on the head, right frame on the face. Back down to the floor. Good. Sitting up. Arm bar switch. Right, going to the other side. And back to S mount. Back to regular mount. Back to knee on belly. Knee on chest. Knee on belly. Jump switch. Windshield. Drop back down to side. Side control Americana. Reverse scar. Step over mount. Good and S mount. Back to regular mount. Back to neon belt. And tie. Good work today, guys. Again, I know that. Uh, 
that second position was a little tricky for some of you. Not all of you are brand new, so I wanted to give that a try for sure. I thought we could get all the way through to the triangle, but I, then I, I kind of looked around to see who was following along, and I decided against it. But that turn and learning to turn your opponent to their side will do you a lot of good <coughs> if you're ever looking for you know, any sort of submissions, back takes, especially from side control. Big part of that, unless you're just trying to attack the arms, uh, a big part of attacking from side control is getting your opponent to turn, right? And specifically to turn away from you. So it's a good uh, skill to develop early. All right, any questions on anything we did today? Yep, nope, good. I, uh, uh, so when we're taking the back, do you not want us to swing our leg over instead? Uh, I've normally done that and then go to the body triangle, but is it better to stick your leg? It's not better or worse. Side? I feel like it's just an extra step. If I were doing it in real time, I would just pull and start sitting right away. And my hook can go in as I, as I sit. That's just to make things a little bit faster. If you prefer to take the extra second and throw the leg over, it's definitely not wrong. It's more, it's one of those things that comes down to preference. Uh, but good question. Uh, personally, I try to sit as soon as I can. And the, the more you play with the back control, you, the more you realize, unless you're hard set on scoring and you really need the points, that first hook isn't as important, actually. It's still important, it's just, it means less to you, right? You can technically control the back with just your knee. I'm not suggesting you ever do this, but Coach A, just sit down. Uh, so sit up facing the camera. If all I had were this seatbelt and my knees, and I didn't have hooks, I can still do a pretty good job of staying attached to Coach Nathan. So if he like, if he goes to the side, right? I can still, you know, I can still stay attached to him, assuming I'm clamping my knees. This is obviously not ideal, right? But I've boxed his hips in here, and if I wanted to put hooks in, I can, right? I pull him, and I put my other hook in. But it's important. It's more important that I just have something tracking his hips. So, especially from that side control position, I find it more important before they take their back before to get that sit started. And I can worry about the hooks later. If you want to like take the second to throw that hook over the belly, uh, it's not wrong at all. Yeah? Any other questions? There's a lot of these little things as, as we start getting more and more granular that kind of come down to preference. Like, oh, where do you leave this arm? Where do you leave that arm? Um, but yeah, as you guys do more jiu-jitsu, you'll find certain variations look better for you. S certain ones don't work as well, right? And that's part of what makes this sport fun. Nope. Yep. All right. Uh, take a quick minute. I'm going to go grab a drink, and then we'll start the next class. You guys can start uh, booking those spots, right, for next week, in case you didn't know. So, barely anyone's booked into the advanced class. Um, and I think the beginner only has, like, the Monday, uh, the first slot full or something like that. But there's spots open, so you guys should get your name in there if you want to get in here. Is there anything for kickboxing or no? Yeah, kickboxing's a go still. So what we'll do for kickboxing is I can only have like three people in here because it's like one person per instructor or whatever. Uh, so yeah, you'll come in here. Uh, we're just going to do like work on the wave towers or like the bags there. So I'll just have, you a, have a workout routine for you. Uh, work the bags a little bit, do some stuff. Same old, same old. Hopefully we can get some other stuff going on sooner than later. Sparring and whatnot. Yeah, book it up. Like, no one's booked anything really yet. So, like, everybody's going to book Monday, like, the day of. Everybody will try to get their booking in. So, get your name in there early. You can do it today, starting today. So, all right. Yep. So, bookings are open, especially for the events class. I think there's a few more spots there. If you have a couple stripes on your belt, so most people in this room um, more than welcome to do that. Um, but again, spots are very limited because it has to be kind of one instructor to one student. Unless we have more higher belts kind of volunteer to do that, it's going to be myself, Coach Nick, uh, Coach Nathan, and 
maybe a couple other higher belts. There's the lunch classes too, guys. So if you want to come in for lunches, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I think. Yeah, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, lunch class. Right? You can come in for lunch class as well. Same thing, 30 minute, uh, 30 minute box. And just for now, because it has come up already, um, until we know exactly what the interest level is for you know each time slot, we're kind of limiting people to one 30 minute class for the first week. Um, so we've had people talk about, oh, I want to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or I want to do, you know, there's already people that want to do that, and we have made a note of that, but for now, if you're trying to book multiple slots, we'll just give you one for now, and it, depending on what the interest level is like, because we don't know how full these things are going to be, um, people don't read their emails, <laughs> so once we have, we, once we can gauge how full these classes are, we'll give people the opportunity to book multiple days. I'm sure that'll come up, right? Not everyone's fully comfortable either coming in or they don't feel like they get enough out of working with a dummy. So they'll, you know, some people will opt to stay home, just stay online, do all that. So just make sure you get your name down because uh, if you show up without booking, we're just going to send you home. And you, uh, you, you said there's uh, afternoon classes. So I don't think that was in the email that, uh, that Andal had sent out, but we're doing uh, 11 o'clock. Yeah. Uh, yep. Lunch classes. Monday, uh, okay. Yep. They, okay, I just wanted to confirm before I, before I call him because it wasn't in that email. So, yep, but yep. Uh, that's cool if we can book that. Yeah. That's awesome. Okay. If that wasn't in the email, there are lunch classes. So yep. feel free to okay. feel free to book for that. As well. and is it is it still at the same time, eleven till twelve? Yeah. Yes, but it's going to be in thirty minute blocks, right? So sure. depending on again, depending on interest level, lunch class is usually a little smaller, but it'll be eleven to eleven thirty, and then eleven thirty to twelve, depending on you know class size, how many instructors we have, this and that. Because I don't believe Coach Nick is going to be available for the lunch class ever, but we did have Alex step up and volunteer. Yeah, so Nick's in. Oh, you yeah. are? Yeah. Okay. It's hell of a lot of jobs. Yeah, so there's, again, there's a lot of little mechanical things, but just make sure you're booked in, and we'll be good. Okay? Now, one last leg lock setup to cover with you guys or two more actually but these are going to come from half guard but again through you all know already we're going to start with that leg lock the cycling sequence right so um single leg x double outside rear ashi and then four leg so most of you have seen that already right starting with single leg x one knee in the middle one foot on the outside Take the foot in the middle out, step on the hip, double outside, turn to your knees, right? Sitting up, rear ashy, and now rotate your hip to the outside, triangle your legs, collect the free leg from underneath your armpit for 11. Okay, cycling through our four primary leg off positions. Good. And see, Coach, executing the video uh, as well. Huh? Okay. No, no, it's it's me. Okay. 